Kids, they're stepping down. Will you thank the band for what they do? <laughs> Growing up, uh, a lot of times we, we think that our, our uh, existence, our childhood, our way of living, that that's the norm, right? That, that's our norm, and so we assume that everybody else... Um, has similar you know, circumstances or similar conditions, and that's not the case. Uh, I grew up knowing uh, two of my great grandmothers. All right, two of them. Um, anybody? Anybody else? No. All right, we had a few hands, but and that was our norm, right? I mean, we uh, or maybe uh, um, uh, Alex actually had the the pleasure of knowing one. Of those, so it was his great great grandmother, and uh, uh, there were at least two times that um, he was in a five generation uh, photo, and I don't know who the guy is on the right, <coughs> uh, but uh, that's Alex. Um, the the smaller one is Alex, and, um, uh, and 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 those things are prized, um, and and as he participated in that. The, the, the one that was still living at that time was Granny Foster. And Granny was my mom's mom's mom. Okay, my mom's mom's mom. Keep that one in mind. It will come back to play in a little while. Um, she was a piece of work. Um, see, I told you, it's already come. Uh, she moved from Atlanta uh, down to uh, right, out, right south of Wiggum. Uh, her husband, Louie, uh, didn't drive, but Granny did. And supposedly she drove like a bat out of South Georgia. Are you with me? Um, a very, very bright lady, a voracious reader. Anytime you went into her home, um, she, she was reading something or had just put something down and was starting to read something else. Uh, she could wear out the, the keyboard of a typewriter um, and, and, and did a lot of, of uh, her husband's typing. Uh, he was an attorney. Um, and let's just say that she was a very opinionated lady. If she thought it, it was coming out of that mouth. Y'all see where I'm going here? A little circle. No. Um, she loved her, her garden club group. And we really don't have many garden clubs. Do we have any garden club? A few? Up in Pelham. Yeah, they're behind. Yeah, but <clears throat> used to that was a thing. The ladies had their garden clubs, and they would get together. And Granny loved garden club you know, or any small group where she could get together and with the with the people there and and uh, keep up with the local going ons. I think they were garden gossip groups. Uh, but as they got got together, and they would often love in their small groups to partake in playing cards. Uh, with one another, a little friendly game of cards, and the, their card game of choice was canasta. And of course, I grew up uh, playing. Can, anybody, any canasta players? Yeah. yeah. And um, so th these ladies, they played so much until they actually developed their own set of rules. You know, you, you had the regular rules, but they would tweak them, and you know, this is how you play. And so they would adhere to. You like this story so far, don't you, Megan? Huh? I like rules, yeah. And and they and they would they you know this is how we play it. And when they got together, they knew what the rules of engagement were there, and um and, and all that was fine until, like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas or any time that the family was gathered together, and they would sit down and someone would have the bright idea. Why don't we play cards? All right. And so you sit there and and if Granny's there. You know what the problem is, right? Granny played to a certain set of rules, and then everybody else played by the real rules. And as they would sit down um, to, to play cards, any time that it would seem that uh, there was something to be disputed about the game or about a certain play or whatever, uh, Granny would you know, let, us, let, let the people know. Um, or if there was something that Granny was going to benefit from, they're being a little bit, I'm just saying, you know, and, and she, w she would let it be known that, you know, no, that's not how we play. And, you know, who is this we that you're talking about? And she was talking about her specific group. That wasn't it. Those weren't the rules. And she was quite convincing. Like I said, a very smart lady. She was quite convincing in, 
as, as she was uh, stating the way that it should be. And uh, sometimes her influence, sometimes her presence, sometimes her variation of the rules, sometimes, um, it, oftentimes, it would bring about tension. It would bring about uh, friction. It would bring about, believe it or not, raised voices. It would bring about chaos. Aren't family gatherings a hoot? All right. <clears throat> Last week we started a, a new message series called Influencers, and hopefully you all got your name tag. I see. Um, hello, my name is Influencer. That's right. And um, we discussed last week that all of us are influencers, and some of us are quite aware of that because of whatever our position is or whatever, right? But, and, but some of us really aren't. Um, some of us, when we, when we go out, everything that you do, it, it's, it's going to influence somebody in some way, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And so I, start, I started asking some questions last week, and I'm going to start out with them again. Are you aware that you're an influencer? If you're, if you're in the education system and you don't realize that you're an influencer, shame on you, right? Uh, right? Uh, if you're a teenager and you think for one moment that those younger kids aren't looking at you, you're wrong. I'll get off that box just a second. All right, so um, how do you think that you influence people? Is it in a good way or is it in a negative way? Don't say it out loud. Because we'll tell you you're wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> and does it matter to you? Does it matter to you that you're an influencer? Are you, are you intentional in what it is that you're doing, how you're doing it, or do you just try to slide your way from the beginning of the week to the end of the week, or from the beginning of the year to the end of the year? So you can say, oh my, where did, where did the year go? Well, we, all, or all of us, we're called to do something with that purpose. And do you understand what it is that your purpose is? Because as you're living out your purpose, that's the way that you're influencing or that you should be. So last week we talked about um, how, how, our, how, how our influence, as we go out into the community, it permeates. We talked about the leaven, we talked about the yeast, uh, as it goes out and... and, and um, uh, the gospel message go, leaves, hopefully, this place as we live out our values in the world and just a little bit sprinkled into the, the larger mass, hopefully, that permeates through and it changes the world around us. It influences that and changes it. So um, let's look at an, at an example this morning of what was going on in the early church um, and, it, and it's going to be a different way of how that influence or how, uh, the, how it is that we affect. In the early church, most, most people believed that, that Paul's letter to the people in Galatia uh, was his first epistle, his first letter to the churches. And, um, and, and so obviously it's thought to be the oldest epistle of, uh, of Paul's. But um, in this specific portion of, of uh, Galatians 2... We're going to be looking at what Paul is trying to teach as he explains doctrine, he explains theology, and uh, he even squares up some things that are going on that are uh, incorrect in the early church or how it is that they're living it out. It's a little bit longer passage, but, but I think for context, we've, we've, got, to, we've got to do it. Uh, Galatians 2, it's verses 11 through 21. I'm reading out of the New Revised Standard Version. But when Peter came to Antioch, this, this is Paul writing. Uh, but when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterward, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy. And even Barnabas was led astray by his hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, Since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, 
Why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying, obeying the law. And we, we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will be made right by God, with God by obeying the law. But suppose we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner. If I rebuild the old system of law, I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all the requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In some of your translations, the version that you have at home when you read it, it's going to read a little bit differently. But I, but I think the new Revised Standard Version nails it. And, um, and I, I appreciate you indulging me um, read, reading that because we do need to know the context of, of what's going on here. Peter's ministry was primarily to the Jews, uh, the, the Jewish people reaching out to them and then converting them over into the church. And being a Jew himself, it was easy for them to relate to, to him. He was able to uh, share his information. He was able to share his conversion uh, story. He was able to sh talk about how he walked with Christ and how he freed him, freed how Christ freed him from those things. And then he was able to minister to the Jewish believers uh, or to the Jews and make them. Uh, uh, be believers and convert them into the church. And James 2 uh, was specifically called to minister to the Jews. Now Paul, on the other hand, was called to minister to Gentiles. And so uh, when he felt that call, he went to Peter, who was the leader, the, the head of the church at that time, and he asked him if it would be okay uh, to minister specifically to the Gentiles. And Peter said that was fine. But here's a little side note, something that's not in your scripture. Peter had just finished a, um, a, a message series called Liberty and Justice for All. It was on the justice ministries. And he had had somebody to come in from another town and talk about uh, 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 serving those that are in poverty. And so he said, hey, hey, you heard the sermon, right? And so would you continue as you're going about your ministry, would you help uh, feed the poor? Would you help... Continue to take up collections. He said, absolutely. The Gunters were awesome whenever they shared that information. And so I'll gladly continue to send money back to help minister to the poor. How'd you like that plug? The Gunters. All right. So um, Paul felt that ministering to the poor was important. And so he, he, absolutely, he said, Peter, absolutely, we'll, we'll continue to do that. We'll raise money and we'll send it back to take care of, uh, of, of the poor. Jewish or Gentile, it really didn't matter. So here we have Paul and Barnabas, and they're ministering to the Gentiles. Peter and James, they're ministering to the Jews. Now, Peter, and this is specifically in Antioch, but Peter would, would come to town, and he would hang out with the Gentile converts, right? And, and, and so he would, he, uh, he would fellowship with them, he would eat with them, and now he was fully aware that these individuals had not followed the the old Jewish law of, of uh, being uh, circumcised in, in order to be found clean because that, that rule, that old rule, the Jewish rule, law, had been, had been, um, um, had been put aside. And so uh, these, these uh, individuals coming in, um, uh, he, he would, uh, Peter knew, Peter had been given the information that... Uh, that there was no clean or unclean, that all were clean in the sight of God because of their relationship with, with Jesus Christ. And Peter was fully aware of that, 
And so he would gladly hang out with the Gentiles up until a group of James's friends came. Now, these were the Jewish converts, uh, Judaizers, people that believed that even though they were in the, in the Christian church, that they also needed to continue to do, keep up with the old Jewish uh, law, the old Jewish ways. And so all of a sudden, Peter couldn't hang out. He couldn't associate with the Gentile believers. He couldn't do that because... Uh, the scripture says that he was, uh, he was afraid that it would uh, offend his friends that were coming into town. Now, um, and, and so obviously he, he didn't want to hang out with them. And Paul, when he sees this, he sees the hypocrisy that, uh, that, uh, that he, he uh, sometimes he would hang out with them and then other times he wouldn't because of who was there. And he calls him out on it and um, I can only imagine him calling out Peter as he, he comes and he tells him, you know, what you're doing is not right. And uh, I, I can imagine as he gets closer to him and he says, hey, hey, as, as funny as you're, as you're talking about the law, what's that that I smell? Is that ham on your breath? You know, so Peter had been hanging out with him and, and eating the stuff that, that the other people said that they couldn't eat. But yet, you know, now I can't hang out with you. And, and, and uh, Paul uh, Paul absolutely called him on his stuff. And he calls him out publicly, the scripture said, in front of other people. And on this different set of rules that he had. Okay, you're playing by this set of rules, but when these people here were playing by this set of rules. And Paul, a very, very educated man, a very, very skillful debater. And he, he, he starts up and he tells Peter... Um, uh, hey, you and I, you and I, we know the law. We know the law. We've lived by the law. We know what the rules of, of that are. And you and I both know that keeping every single one of those laws is not going to find us found not guilty. Every, we can follow every single one of those, and we're not going to be found justified. And, he, and as a matter of fact, he, he says what's going to end up happening is those rules, they were there to point us to the fact that we couldn't do it. Those rules were put there so that we would know that we have a need for grace, that we have a need for salvation. As a matter of fact, that we need a Savior in order to free us from those things. And Paul goes on in this text to say that there's only one way that that happens. And through that's through grace. It's through, um, that's poured out on us. And that we receive by faith, not by works. Not by what it is that we do. Not by what it is that we don't do. But simply because God loved us so much. And it's by faith. It's by grace. It's by our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about that we believe and that we receive. And obviously, um, our response should be um, that, that, uh, that we uh, go out and do, we do works. And, and uh, we, we respond by going out and trying to um, have, have fruit. But that's in response to the gospel, not for payment of the gospel. That's, we're, not, we're not buying our way into heaven. You can't do it. But, but we should be doing good. But that's not what saves us. So Paul tells Peter and all of us uh, the old, that his old self has been crucified with Christ. The old is gone, the old is gone, the old is gone. And, and therefore, he lives anew in Christ. See, Paul was saying when he loves, that's Christ loving individuals. When, when he goes out and he serves, that's Christ serving others. And Paul explains um, that it's all about the relationship, not about the rules. And we're going to be getting in a little bit more into rules uh, next week when we start talking about our parenting skills and our children. <coughs> but Paul lets Peter know that it, uh, it isn't enough that he has gotten it all wrong. See, Peter, it's not just that, that you have gotten this wrong, but, but what you're doing is actually pouring over. And he points out that, you, that you're, even, you're even stepping on Barnabas now. Barnabas, that one that, that's, that's been called to ministry to the Gentiles, now all of a sudden, okay, can you imagine the problem? If you're called to, to uh, minister to the Gentiles, and oh yeah, yeah, when these people come in, I can't even hang out with them. I mean, we, we've got a problem, and, and, and I think that's a lot of the reason that Paul calls him on it. See, when, you look up, when we look at our leaders, when we look at other believers trying to make up rules or to change the rules along the way, it influences others. And this is not in a good way, this is in a bad way. 
and I see this played out all over and over and over. We come up with rules. Um, uh, we, uh, Karen and I are aware of a specific church that, you know, it was one of those where uh, back in the days when the lottery was coming, uh, most of y'all don't even know before lottery, but, but you know, that, you know, if they were going to sell tickets in there, uh, you couldn't go buy anything in there. You can't step foot in that door because... <coughs> You don't, you, don't, you don't think I can go in and get my Diet Coke? And, you know, oh. And so we, we come up with man-made rules. And, and whenever we start doing that way, uh, we end up driving people away from the church. And um, uh, we never hear in, in this passage, we never hear if Peter actually changed his ways. We don't know if he changed his behavior immediately or if it's something that he had to think about for a little while. But I will tell you this. Most commentaries will tell you that uh, Paul's debate on this, on this issue was so ironclad and everything he did pointed to Christ. And so most, most theologians believe Peter was left speechless. You know, it's a pretty, pretty good argument that you got there. And, and there was nothing else that could be said. And, and he walks away uh, to do whatever. <clears throat> but it's the grace of God that compelled Paul to live a completely devoted life to Christ. It wasn't about the rules. It wasn't about, oh yeah, yeah, you made your case on the rules, and so therefore I'll... No, it was the fact that God loved him uh, in spite of himself. And it didn't matter if Paul was playing cards with this group of people or playing cards with that group of people. He played by the same rules all the time. And those rules, they were founded on grace, which is very akin to where we try to land here at this church. All right? Um, uh, we've, we've been in churches where we argued over the amount of water um, that it takes uh, for baptism. All right? We, we, we've been there. And, uh, we, and when, when we do that, we totally miss we totally miss what it is that God's doing uh, in the life of that person, in the life of all of those that, that are around. Um, Paul knew, Paul knew that, uh, that the rules didn't change. Uh, his influence was strong. And uh, why? It was because he was consistent. It wasn't about him. It was all about Christ and his story. After his conversion, his story, it stayed the same, it stayed the same, it stayed the same. Uh, he was the same way, uh, whether uh, he was here, whether he was there, whether he was singing praises in freedom, or whether he was singing praises in jail. His story didn't change because of his circumstances. Now, how can the undeniable presence of God's grace encourage us to live uh, that kind of life, one that's completely devoted to God? Well, first, I think we have to recognize that that's what it is that, that has saved us. It wasn't that, that you were good enough. Who in here was good enough? No, uh, there, there, there's not one. And, and how could living that type of life, the life that Paul talks about, where, where the, the old man has, has, has died, being crucified with Christ, and then uh, going out and living as Christ, um, can you imagine the positive influence that that would have in the community? And uh, uh, does the world, does this community, um, do, do they see us as fakes? That, uh, you know, you have your Sunday morning mass that you put on, and, and we're here and every, everything's good. And, and then we go out there and uh, there's a beautiful example in everybody always, uh, which is why my bucket's still out here. Uh, there's a beautiful example in there about um, uh, someone who had, uh, uh, Bob Goff was almost, almost went off on somebody. And a little bit later, and he held it together because of his bucket. Uh, and, and then he came back and, and he says, oh, yeah, by the way, that was a great sermon this morning. You know, uh, are, are you going to encounter me later on today and this sermon be what it is that you hear out there? Uh, hope, hopefully so. Um, are we more interested in seeing one another on Sunday? And hopefully we don't get to that status to where this is a, uh, this is a garden club. This is the place that we can. Ho hopefully it, it goes much, much farther uh, than that, that it's not about socializing. 
uh, are we truly here to worship? Are we truly here to be filled up? Are we truly um, uh, here to, uh, to get all that he has so that we can go out and share uh, with others? And I, I, I'm going to close with this. Um, there's a whole lot of com- confusion about grace. And uh, I, I hear uh, with, with what I do, uh, not on Sunday mornings, but with what I do, I often hear the question, um, with older individuals, have I been good enough? <coughs> you know, um, I'm sitting here and looking at the end of life. Have I been good enough to get into heaven? You ready? No, you haven't. It's not about you anyway. It's about the grace of Jesus Christ um, and your relationship with him. Um, and, and we walk around with fear because of things like that. Uh, where we should be walking fully in grace. The question is, uh, do you accept his unconditional love? And we've got people, and I think it's on the next steps, um, we, we've got people that won't come into the church because, well, I've got to get my life together before I... Oh, my goodness. If you're waiting, you, you'll always be waiting because uh, at the point that you think you've got it together, you don't. Um, uh, growing up, Growing up, I would I would hear um, the words, you know, every head bowed and every eye closed, and you know you didn't do it. You you, you know you were looking. Come on now, just come on now. Some of you just did that stretch. <laughs> um, but then I would hear the words, and it, and it it would break my heart. Uh, There's somebody here that's not right with God. What they meant to say, what they meant to say, God wants to have a relationship with you and he loves you so much that he would do anything and everything to love you in. So now with every head bowed, Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. We thank you so much for the grace, mercy, forgiveness, love that that comes through a relationship with you. This isn't about whether we can keep rules or not. This is all about you loving us so much that you found a way. You found a way. We couldn't keep rules. We couldn't keep. uh, We we did this one and this one, but what about that one? And, and, And people had to keep coming back with sacrifices and sacrifices. And sacrifices, and there were so many rules, and and then and then you know we have come and we have made our own rules. We we it has to be this way. And Father, please forgive us for what we've made it because it hasn't been about you. We thought we were loving you. We thought that we were trying to do the right thing, but we we got misguided because we took our eyes off of you. We started looking at rules and not at you. Father, I ask that you allow all of us to fully experience your love in a very real way. Help us to receive. Help us to fully embrace the fact that you love us in spite of ourselves. And all we have to do is allow you to come into our life. And it changes everything. Father, I ask that you allow us to remember that it's not about us to start with or to end with, but it is all about you. We're sorry that we've made it about ourselves. Send us out to be people that no matter which garden club, no matter which uh, card table that we're sitting at, no matter what group of people, that the rules are always the same. And the rule is this, we, you love us and we're going to love them. Teach us to learn enough about our our own doctrine, our own theology, uh, about what the scripture says so that we can share that. And the message is simple. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. Not only today, but every day into eternity. We pray these things in the blessed Lord name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, the altar's open for whatever it is that uh, you've made it. uh, That's not about him. The altar's open this morning. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd love to talk to you this morning. Um, And sometimes uh, it's as simple as, uh, I don't know what it is, but I know that he's calling me to come closer.
that, and that would be way more articulate than what came out of my mouth when I, when I uh, walked the aisle so many years ago. Uh, maybe you are a, a member of another church. We don't have members here. We have partners in ministry. We believe in the priesthood of all believers that all of us are called to ministry. All of us are called to do something, uh, uh, something. And uh, here we have partners. Uh, we would love to partner with you. Karen uh, has a little uh, form with some basic information. We would love to have you come walk alongside us. However, however he's leading you this morning, the altar of the Lord's open.